allowed us to come together one more time, one more time, one more time. He allowed us to come together one more time, one more time, one more time. He allowed us to come together one more time. One more time, one more time, he allowed us to come together. One more time, one more time, one more time, he allowed us to come together. One more time, one more time, one more time, he allowed us. Come together one more time, one more time, one more time. He allowed us to come together one more time, one more time, one more time. He allowed us to come together one more time. Lifted up and my mouth filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless the O Lord. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless the O Lord. And my mouth filled with praise With a heart of thanksgiving I will bless the O Lord With my hands lifted up And my mouth filled with praise With a heart of thanksgiving I will bless the O Lord with my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this, the opportunity that you allowed us to rise with breath in our bodies, strength in our bones, and in our right conscious mind, Lord. And you allowed us, Lord, to come out and worship you in spirit and in truth, collectively, dear Father God. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see this day, a new day yet unseen, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, in which we will hear from you, Lord. We come, dear Father God, open ready to receive from you the word that you have prepared for us this week. Dear Father God, you have allowed us to go out in the land, Lord, and to share this gospel message. You allowed us to pour out to the world, dear Father God. And Lord, now we come back empty, ready to be filled again, ready to be equipped again, Lord, to go out and do the same task, dear Father God, to, make, to spread this gospel message, to encourage, dear Father God, to strengthen others, dear Father God. That, Lord, we border, we plant, but, dear Father God, in it all, you get the increase. And we praise you for that, dear Father. And we thank you for how you have blessed us throughout this week. You kept us safe in our travels, dear Father God. You allowed us to be productive, dear Father God. You have healed us, Lord, and delivered us, Lord, whatever may have been ailing us, Lord. And, dear Father God, we just come to glorify and magnify your holy and righteous name. For, Lord, you are worthy, Lord. But, dear Father God, there is a praise and a worship, Lord, that is in our hearts and on our lips. 
And dear Father God, we come this morning to praise you and to worship you and to glorify your holy and righteous name. And now, Lord, we allow you to take full control. Holy Spirit, have your way in this house this morning. Touch every part of our hearts. Whatever that is not of us, not of you, Lord, remove it and replace it, Lord, with your word, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. We honor you. And we glorify your holy and righteous name. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody give God a hand clap of praise. Yeah. Come on, I'm happy this morning. Every morning I come in this building, I'm happy. I might not get a chance to say it or express it like I mean it. But come on, just give God another 15 seconds of praise. It's worth it. It's, it's worth it. Because when we leave here, we're going to depend that we're going to need God to cover us, guide us, talk to us, bless us. Everything that we need, we hear to ask God to do his will in our lives. Amen. Nobody, 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 nobody
nobody do me like Jesus. Can't 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 nobody love me like Jesus. Can't nobody love me like Jesus. Can't nobody hold me like Jesus. Can't nobody hold me like Jesus. Can't no my friend. chapter 40 verses 21 through 31 starting at verse 21 have you not known have you not heard have it not been told you from the beginning and have you not understood from the foundations of the earth it is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretches out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as tents to dwell in, that bringeth the prince, princes to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Ye they shall not be planted, ye they shall not be sown. Ye their stock shall not take root in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither and the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. To whom they will ye liken me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things, that bringeth out their hosts by number. He calleth them by names, by the greatness of his might. For he, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Why sayest thou, Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. Thou hast, hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. To them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. In verse 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They should mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. 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 We'll now prepare ourselves for the offering. pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to present your tithes and our offerings. Dear Father God, we thank you for how you have blessed us and supplied all of our needs according to your riches and glory. Dear Father God, your provision, dear Father God, is endless. And Lord, we thank you for it, Lord. Now, dear Father God, may these funds be used to uplift your kingdom to spread this gospel message, dear Father God, and to make disciples of all men. Lord, we'll forever give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Amen.
worship leader this morning. Uh, prepare yourselves to receive the word. And have a blessed week. Amen. 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 Brother Mike. God bless you, man. Amen. Amen. Smile out there, amen. 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 Oh, amen. Ain't nobody mad but the devil, amen. All right. Now. Amen. <laughs> Just me. 
faith and never cease to pray. Just walk upright, call him noonday or night. He'll be there, he'll be there. There's no need to worry for God. Never. If the wind never stops blowing and gray clouds always cover the sky, if the rain billows never stop rolling and it would just rain, rain all the time, if the moon decided not to shine at night and the stars decided not to give their light lord you gave me yeah you gave me one more sunny day yeah if the wind never never stopped blowing if gray clouds yes, yes. always cover the sky if the billows never stop rolling and it would just rain rain all the time yeah if the moon decided not to shine at night Lord and the stars decided not to give their light yeah Lord you gave me I'm so glad you gave me one more sunny day yeah oh I know I know you gave me you gave me one more sunny day you spoke to the clouds you spoke to the wind yeah and they all passed away you spoke to the wind you spoke to the winds and the wind to a tear you spoke to the billows you spoke to the billows and they all obeyed your will one more, 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 you gave me, you gave me, one more, sunny day, Lord, you gave me, you gave me, one more sunny day you spoke to the clouds you spoke to the clouds i know they all passed away you spoke to the wind you yeah. spoke to the winds and the four winds stood still you spoke to the billows you spoke to the, the rain and they all obeyed your will yeah one more one more one more one more one more 
One more, 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 Lord, you gave me. I'm so glad. Lord, you gave me. One more, one more sunny, sunny day. Come on, saints, clap your hands this morning. If you thank God for one more sunny day, God have mercy. Mercy, God. Mercy, 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 mercy. Mercy, 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 mercy. We thank God again this morning, saints. Amen. Aren't you thankful to God for this choir this morning? Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise for this morning for our choir. Amen. Amen. We thank God for what God is doing here at Carrie's Baptist Church. Amen. 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 We give God the honor and glory for who he is in our lives and all that he is doing, saints. Come on, can you clap your hands one more time this morning? The Bible says he inhabits, he inhabits the praise of his people. Amen. And we come in to this place, we want God to know that we're here on his behalf and not because of anything that we've done good, but we're here because he has spared us another day, one more day. Amen. And we thank God for that this morning. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer this morning as we prepare our time to get into our time of teaching and learning time of preaching as the word of God will come forth on this eve on this day amen well fathers in the name of Jesus that we are grateful that you have allowed us to make our way out to this place again Lord it is a familiar place it is a place where you says that we are to enter that course with thanksgiving into that gates with praise we ought to bless your name and so, Lord, we thank you that we come in today, Lord God, not in our name, but we come in the name of Jesus, that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. We thank you, Father, that you have kept us all week long. You watched over us, God, through seen danger, seen and unseen. And, Lord, you allowed us to make our way to this place again, Lord God, that we would lift up holy hands and give you the honor and give you the glory. Now, Father, as we come, Lord God, we thank you for this moment and this time right now that you said that man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of your mouth. We thank you, God, that you have given us this opportunity, Lord God, to share the good news of Jesus Christ. That your word says heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word, it will always stand. And so, Father, thank you that you don't leave us as orphanage, Lord God. You don't leave us alone, but, God, you give us a word and a word that will comfort us and encourage us in a time of need. Now, Father, I pray today, God, that you allow the spirit of uh, the anointing to rest in this place, Lord God, like never before. I pray, God, as we minister the word of God, Lord God, that you would hide us behind the cross, God, that you would stir up the gift that live on the inside of us. God, I pray by faith, God, that your people would, Lord God, lead this place knowing that you are God who's able to redeem and deliver from all hurt, harm, or danger. Thank you, Lord God, for just this day, and thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Now, Holy Spirit, stir up the gift that's on the inside of us. Allow us to preach with power. Or let, us, let us preach with passion. But most of all, let us preach, Lord God, the promises that you have made to us in the name of Jesus. And we will forever give your name the glory, the honor, and the praises. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, clap those hands this morning if you believe that. Well, we first give God the honor and glory and praises again for another day. For truly, this is the day the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice and to be glad within it. We thank God that he has allowed us to make our way to this building, a place, Lord, that what God has set aside, that this will be a house of praise, amen, a house of prayer. 
house of purpose, and we just honor him for that right now. We thank God that he's watched over us all week long. He's kept us from all hurt, harm, or danger. Amen. And we thank him that he has still given us the ability to continue on standing when others are falling away. And we praise him for that this morning, saints of God. We don't take that for granted because we know it's God and God alone. We know if Satan had his way, all of us, amen, would be somewhere, amen, patching up our wounds. But we praise God this morning that we serve a God who keeps all hurt, harm, a danger away from us, and we worship him for that. We thank God this morning for our wife, amen, praise God for the first lady that God has ordained and called her out and all that God will call her out to do that she would do it, amen. First lady and I celebrated 27 years, amen, on Friday, amen, of being married to one another. And I'm telling you, saints of God, I'm still trying to figure out how to be married. Amen. After 27 years, I don't know about the first lady. I'm still trying to figure it out. But praise God for her. Amen. This morning. Amen. That God has allowed her to be a part of our lives. We thank God for Reverend Staten. Amen. Her presence. Praise God. Amen. For Reverend DeBro in his absence. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Staten, for all that you do. Please never, don't ever thank Reverend Staten. Your, amen. Your help. Amen. Your encouragement is not needed because it is. You know I can't do it all by myself. And so we thank God, amen, that you continue on keeping your hands on the ply and you're not looking back. You're not turning away from what God has ordained you to do, and we praise God for that this morning. Thank you, amen, Deacon Combs, amen. God bless you, amen. Thank you, Deacon Combs, for standing this morning, being our worship leader. We thank God, amen, for Deacon Banks, amen, and all that they're doing in the earth. Amen, Deacon Banks and Deacon Combs and myself and Brother Eddie Gaten, we're teaching a... Um, a six weeks, amen, um, trustee training class, amen. And for those who have attended, amen, amen. For those who have attended, amen. Look around the room, for, see who has attended, amen. Those who have attended, amen, amen. I praise God. I hope that you are enjoying our time together. And so we praise God for those two men of God, amen, that God has given us them, amen. We also acknowledge, amen, Deacon Thomas in his absence, amen. Praise God for his service and his time, amen, here at Carey's Baptist Church. Thank God for our trustees this morning, for those who are here, amen. We praise God for you, amen. Thank God for our ushers, amen. Thank God for our sound ministry. Sister Quandra, we always thank God for you for taking our temper to her, but we praise God this morning for this choir, amen. I want to praise God for you, amen. Reverend Brown, thank you so much, amen, for your amen. Continue on being faithful to the ministry that God has ordained you to be a part, amen. And I praise God, amen, the great days are coming, amen, because of our faith this morning. But most of all, saints, I want to thank God for you. Please don't ever think, amen, we're not thankful for you this morning. The Bible said where two or three are gathered together, agreeing as touching God is in our midst. And praise God this morning, we could all, amen, could have all played hooky this morning, Brother Billy, we could all played hooky. But we got up and came to the household of faith, amen, because we believe, amen, coming is a part of God's ordained plan for us, amen. We know that, amen, we could do it by screaming. We know we could do it by YouTube. But, amen, it's, it's nothing like coming together, saints of God. And we come together, amen, to see heart to heart and breast to bread, amen, and be in the presence of God's people, amen, that is something to be commended. So give God a, a, a round clap of, a, a clam clap of praise this morning, amen, for your effort of coming into the household of faith. Amen. We're going to get ready, amen, to go into the word this morning, amen. Turn me over to the book of Matthews, the 20, excuse me, at Matthews, the 8th chapter. I want to break into a scene and at 23rd verse, Matthews, amen, the 8th chapter, 23rd verse through the 27th verse. And it goes back to what the choir was singing earlier, amen, where they say God never fails. We want to talk about storms don't last always. Amen. amen. Storms don't always last. Or storms, amen, don't last always. Amen. That's what we want to talk about this morning, saints of God. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we are very, very mindful of hurricane season. Living here on the peninsula, amen, many of you have been living here all your entire lives, and you have experienced when storms come into this place. According to, amen, research, and according to meteorologies, amen, hurricane season starts June the 1st, and it ends November the 30th. 
And during that time of hurricane season, FEMA gives us some practical principles and some applications that we should apply to our lives to prepare for hurricanes. Because storms is a natural part of life, saints. No matter how much we try to run away from it, you can move from here to California, or you can move from California back here. Every state that you go to is going to be faced with some type of storm or some type of, amen, tragedy that take place in the earth that you and I cannot prevent ourselves from. And we think about that this morning. FEMA gives us a few, perhaps a few suggestions that how we should plan for hurricanes. First thing it says that we should know, our, know your evacuation route, meaning when the hurricane comes, every person in the room should know what route to take to escape the danger that the hurricane will bring when it comes. That's very important, saints of God, because if we and I was faced with a hurricane, we praise God that we're not. But if we're faced with, an, with a hurricane, that would be an evacuation plan put in place and a route that you and I should take, amen, to leave this area to go into safe area. Second point, FEMA says, is that when a, a hurricane comes, Sister Lovick, amen, we ought to be people that would gather supplies. All of us went through, amen, COVID-19. You remember going to the grocery store, couldn't find no toilet paper. Couldn't find no Lysol, couldn't find no, no wipes, anything that had Clorox in it, you couldn't find it. Because people had gathered their supplies because they was putting themselves in a place of what if the, the world closes down and it don't open back up for the next four or five months, they would have supplies to keep them during that time of need. The next thing, amen, the FEMA suggests, amen, that we should all make an emergency plan. Meaning that every person that's, if you're going to be able to exempt and be able to survive and ride the storm out, you've got to make an emergency plan. That means, amen, that every household needs to understand how to cooperate and how to respond during a hurricane. I don't know if we do that, amen, but if you're, if you're not doing you may want to think about it. And lastly, the thing he says, amen, that FEMA says is that we should be people that should be, amen, have a mind to understand what works for me in my house don't work for you in your house. So as we think about that this morning, my brothers and sisters, just like in the natural, when the storm comes and we prepare ourselves, I don't believe anyone in this room this morning, if we know a hurricane is coming tomorrow, we would be here having worship. I don't believe we would. I believe all of us, if a hurricane was coming tomorrow, you would be either A, taking shelter, or B, in your car trying to drive as far away from this place to safe land that you will survive the storm. Well, just like in the natural, the same way we take precautions and the same way we take, amen, we pay attention to what the forecast says, Storms will come in our lives, and we need to understand and take precautions and take attention to what God says when storms come. Are y'all with me this morning? Storms are going to come, my brothers and sisters, no matter if we're saved, no matter if we've been born again, no matter if we pass a church, no matter if we hold a title in a, in a, in a church, no matter if we pay our tithes, no matter how much we pray, storms are going to come because they're coming, amen, based upon in the world in which we live in. And that's why Paul, he says in the scripture, Paul tells the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, the 12th through the 15th verse, Paul says, now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, and straw, each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it. Because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each, uh, each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone works which he is built upon, it, it, it built, not, no, it not, does not endure, he will receive a reward. Let me read that last scripture again in that 14, 14 verse. He says, if anyone works which he has built on, it endureth, he will receive a reward. 
And so you may say, Pastor, this morning, what is Paul trying to get us to understand? Paul is trying to help you and I understand, like he was trying to help the church at Corinth understand, that storms are going to come. And the only people that will survive the storm is that your house have got to be built upon the rock. You remember the story, amen, the three little pigs. You remember that story, amen, how there was three little pigs and one built their home with straw. And the wolf came and he huffed and he puffed and he blew the house down. Are y'all with me this morning? You remember, amen, the next pig, he built his home, amen, on wood. And the wolf came and he huffed. And he puffed and he blew the house down. But there was one pig, are y'all with me this morning, that had enough knowledge to understand if they build their home on the brick and the mortar, when the, when the wolf come, if he huffs and he puffs, he would not blow the home away. Pastor, how did that apply to all of us in this room this morning? Well, thanks of God, you and I have got to be like that one little pig. Amen. We've got to use the knowledge of God to understand upon this rock I'll build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against. And when the storms of life comes to blow against your home, amen, you will be anchored in God and nothing will move you. Are y'all with me this morning? And so, brothers and sisters, you got to understand something. That we're living in a time where storms are going to come. Storms are coming day in and day out. Storms are coming, amen, whether we want in the calm or don't want in the calm. But may I suggest you this morning that when storms come, storms don't last always. Amen. They will, they will come in your life. Amen. And they will try to move you from, from having the promises that God has made you. But if you hold on and keep the faith, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you are able to ask or think through the power that worketh in you. So in our text this morning, we find there is nothing too hard for God. Matthew chapter 8 describes Jesus as a man of action who comes to give life to those in need. However, in our lesson today, Jesus reveals himself as Jehovah Shalom because he brings peace when faced with natural disasters. A natural disaster is a storm, a flood, an earthquake. It's an incredible disease, and all of us can understand that COVID-19, amen, is classified as a natural disaster because it brought death, destruction, amen, and destroyed so many different lives. And as a result, when we face national disasters, we need to understand the storm will not always last. Are y'all with me, saints of God? You need to understand that the storm is going to come. But if you know how to keep your hand on the plier and not look back, amen, God will give you survival skills to survive the storm. Are y'all with me this morning? I pray I'm giving you a word of encouragement this morning. Because as I looked over my life and thought about, amen, this week, and I thought about what, amen, God would want us to hear, God began to share with me, amen, son, that some people are in a, in a storm. And they're looking at the storm to think the storm is going to last all way. But if you tell them to keep their hands on the plow and not look back, God is able to pull you through the storm and you will win. And so this morning, it is my objective. It is my objective, amen, to help us understand what we should do when we face the storm. That is my objective this morning. And as I teach the word of God, I want you to understand that storms are going to come, saints. We cannot prevent storms from taking place. But praise God that God is a God that helps us understand that when storms come in our lives, he will give us words of wisdom and instructions of what we should do during the storm. And so our first point, we need to understand something this morning when the storm comes. Amen, sister us, and we need to follow the leader. Yes. Amen. When a storm comes in all of our lives, we need to understand that God is our leader. And when that storm comes, we've got to follow him. Look what the word of God says in verse 23. In verse 24, the Bible says, when, he says, now when he got into the boat, his disciples, they followed him. 
You got to see it in the text, saints. And suddenly a great temptress arose on the sea so that the boat was covered with waves, but he was asleep. Pastor, can you help us out this morning? Well, the first thing we need to understand, whoever or whatever we follow, saints of God, when trouble times come, we will act out who we follow. Are y'all with me this morning? That's the reason why so many people panic when they find themselves in a situation, amen, and they're not following God. Because when you follow God and you find yourself in a situation, God gives you and I 66 books of how to handle problems, saints. So the Bible says in this scripture, it says now when he had got into the boat, his disciples, they followed him. Are y'all with me? But notice the word of God says that when they begin to follow God, that's when the storms really came. And may I suggest to you something this morning, saints of God, you are not going through what you're going through because you did something wrong. You're not going through what you're going through because God is mad at you. You are going through what you're going through because you're following God. Are y'all with me this morning? When you follow God, you are determined to find you're going to find yourself being hated, being persecuted, being talked about like a child of God. Amen. But you know without a shadow of doubt, when you follow God, that old things have passed away and behold, all things are new. Are y'all with me this morning? So they begin to follow him. And when they follow him, the storm comes. But as you notice that when the storm comes, Jesus is sleeping. Yes. Why is that, Pastor? Why would Jesus be sleeping? I'm looking for my follower to, my follower to show me some type of response. Well, the one thing that we need to understand about Jesus, Jesus, the reason why he goes to sleep, saints, is because he knows that he has more power than the storm that's coming against him. Are y'all with me this morning? And that's why you and I as saints of God, when we make up in our mind to follow God, I don't care what comes our way. We know that we have the power that lives on the inside of us. And if we walk in authority and walk in that power, God has the ability to make us sleep when other folks are panicking and what they're going through. I just don't believe, saints of God, as a child of God, that God has saved me. And every time I find myself in a situation that's bigger than me, I ought to lose my mind. Are y'all with me this morning? I just believe, Brother Calvin, that when, if God called me out, amen, into the storm, he said he'll never leave me nor forsake me. That means he's my shepherd in the storm like he's my shepherd in a time of need. Are y'all with me this morning? So the first thing we need to understand, saints of God, what gives us the right to understand that storms don't last always because I have a leader. Yeah. Amen. And my leader shows me that when the storm comes, I don't have to panic. Are y'all with me this morning? I don't have to fret. Amen. I don't have to be afraid because he said in his word, he will never leave me nor forsake me. The Bible says this way in the book of St. John, the 8th chapter, the 12th verse. The Bible says then, spake Jesus against, uh, again unto, unto them, saying, he says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me, come on, saints, shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. What is Jesus saying? Jesus says that when we follow him, Sister Barker, no matter what situation comes, we don't walk in darkness, meaning that we don't have understanding of the situation. But when we walk, we walk in intelligence to know our God is able to do all but fail. And you ought to thank God this morning that storms will come in your life, but God will give you intelligent, amen, or intellectual mind that you'll be able to overcome the storm at hand. So your first point you need to understand, what helps you understand that storms don't last always it's because I have a leader. And when I follow my leader, he helps me be calm in the storm. And when I'm calm in the storm, the storm will pass me over. Second point, if you're taking notes this morning, not only should I follow the leader, but during the storm, saints, if you're going to follow the leader, you ought to fellowship with him. Are y'all with me this morning? Notice I said to you this morning, when the storm hurricanes come, 
In order for us to be able to survive the hurricane, we've got to know how to respond in the hurricane. Well, the verse 25 says that when the storm comes, then his disciples came to him. Look what the word of God said. The Bible said that when the storm came, they didn't go, amen, to the meteorologist. They didn't go, amen, to Walmart, amen. They didn't go to Kmart, amen. They didn't even go to the BX. They came to Jesus. Are y'all with me this morning? So that tells us this morning that when storms come, there ain't nobody can fix that problem like Jesus. He is the only one who has the power to fix that, sort, that situation. So the Bible says that when the storm comes, his disciples come to him. And awake him saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. So if you can see in the scripture, Jesus never panicked, saints. That's what I love about God. I love Jesus because anytime, Brother Michael, when I look at the life of Jesus, there was never a time when Jesus was put in a pressure situation, Sister Merlin, that he would panic about what was going on. And sometimes as believers, saint, can I be honest with us? We will panic, amen, and not have faith in God that God has already delivered us out of the situation before the situation ever took place. Are y'all with me this morning? Yeah. So God is trying to help us understand that when the storm comes, saints, what causes a person to drown is not because they can't swim. What causes a person to drown is because they beat against the water. Y'all with me? And saints, if we're going to survive the storm that we're in, stop trying to fight the storm, but come to Jesus. And when you come to Jesus, he has all the power to give you calmness in the time of need. Remember I said that Jesus is Jehovah Shalom. He's a God of peace, amen. And no matter what storm comes, Jesus will give you peace in that storm. So when they come to Jehovah Shalom, the Bible says they wake him up and says, Lord, save us. We are perishing. Why is that, Pastor? They was perishing because they was not looking at the storm the way Jesus saw the storm. Jesus saw the storm as not, amen, a temptation, but Jesus saw the storm as something he could overcome in the storm. Are y'all with me this morning? And may I suggest you this morning, saints of God, I know it's tough when things come against our lives, but when things come against your life, you got to stand on the word of God where Paul says all things are working for the good of those who love the Lord and who are called according to thy purpose. Pastor, how can you say that? Because if God lets it come to you, God has the power to bring you through it. Are y'all with me this morning? And if you just hold on and keep the faith, and fellowshipping with God through the storm, he'll take you through the storm, and you will be successful in the end. The Bible says it this way in the book of Psalms. Psalms 44 and 22 says, Yea, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. That's what the word of God said, for thy sake. So that means, amen, for Jesus' sake, things are going to come against my life. But praise God for the blood and praise God for God's love because greater love than no man than he laid down his life for his friend. So the second point this morning, how do you and I deal with the storm? We got to first understand that we're going to follow our leader, but then we follow our leader. We've got to, amen, have fellowship him during the time of following. Third point, and we're going to be done. Third point in this sermon, amen, when the storms come. We not only got to follow our leader, but we've got to walk by faith. Oh, Y'all know that was coming. We got to walk by faith, saints of God. We got to walk by faith. Look at the Bible says in 26 and 27. The Bible says, but he said to them, why are you fearful? O ye a little faith. Then he arose. He rebukes the wind and the sea and, the, and, and, and their great calm. So the men marveled, saying, who can this be, that even the winds and the sea obey him? So Jesus' disciples come to Jesus and awake him. And Jesus now is going to give them a counseling session. And the counseling session is based upon fear and it's based upon faith. Why, why fear, Pastor? Because fear is false 
evidence appearing real. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us a spirit of love, power, and sound mind. Fear will make you, un- make you believe, amen, that it's evidence, but it's appearing real, but it's really not real. Why faith, Pastor? Because faith, amen, is relying, amen, on a credible source, amen, that one has the power to do everything but fail. So he gives them a counseling session, Ms. Clark, and he counsels them based upon fear and faith because he understands that just because this storm, I'm with you in this storm, but whoa, lo, amen, I'm going to leave the earth, and you're going to have to survive in a storm by yourself. And I know, amen, every parent in the room this morning, if we could, amen, take on every storm for our children, we would take them on. But praise God, amen, if we train our children and we teach our children, when the storms of life come, they'll walk by faith and not by fear, knowing that God is able to do everything but fear. So Jesus says to them, why are you fearing, O ye a little faith? And may I ask this morning, saints of God, if you're going through a storm, There's no reason to fear the storm, but God wants you to walk by faith in the storm because we know that now faith is a substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. He says, why are you fearing? Oh, ye a little faith. And then he he does an active, a movement. He rises up. Look at what the word of God said. And he began to rebuke, amen, the wind and the sea. And there was a great calm upon the earth. And I praise God this morning that when Jesus rises up in a situation that everything has to bow down. Isn't that what the word of God said? He said, in my name, amen, you shall cast out demons. In my name, you shall speak with unknown tongue. In my name, if you think anything poison, it shall not harm you. In my name. You shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. So Jesus shows us that in the storm, we've got to walk by faith. That means I got to rely on God. I cannot rely on the sources around me, but I got to rely on God. And so the Bible says it this way in Psalms 93. Third and the fourth verse, the Bible says the floods have lifted up, O Lord. And the flood have lifted up your voice. The flood lifts up their ways. The fourth verse says, the Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. Yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. So, Pastor, what are you saying this morning? What I'm saying that when Jesus rises up and begins to speak to the storm, the storm has to obey. And can I suggest some things to God this morning? Don't you think that God is not speaking on your behalf? Because the Bible says that Jesus sits on the right hand of the Father. And he's making intercession for us, amen, daily. And that means when storms come, God is rising up, amen, speaking on your behalf that you will, su- survive, you will survive in the storm that at hand. So as I come to a close this morning, My brothers and sisters, as I come, amen, to this close, amen, there are many things I have learned that I I need in life. I need, amen, air to breathe. I need food, amen, when I'm hungry. I need shelter, amen, when I'm out in a storm. I need clothes to go on my back, amen. I need, amen, health, amen, when I'm sick. But one thing I've learned, amen, Sister Rose, I've learned that I need to have trust and faith in God when the storm comes. And storms are going to come, brothers and sisters. We cannot be people that think, amen, because we're saved, we're born of his spirit, that storms are not going to come, but storms are going to come in our life. And that's why Paul says in the word of God, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers of things present or things to come, nor heights nor depths, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Perhaps, amen, this morning, maybe there is somebody in the room that you are persuaded, and you've been through a storm, and you know, amen, you could tell me, Pastor, if it had not been for God on my side, I would have died in the storm. Well, I got some good news to tell you this morning, that storms, they do come, but they don't last always. And that's why I thank God for the cross, because it was at the cross, at the cross, where I saw the light. And all the burdens of my heart, they rolled away. It was there by faith. 
I received my sight, and now I'm happy all the day. And so now I know when the storm comes. Storms don't come to stay, but storms will pass us by. And so, saints of God, all I'm trying to tell you, keep following Jesus. Amen. Keep, amen, fellowship with him, but most of all, have faith in him that he's able to do everything but fail. And if you keep following him, if you keep, amen, fellowship with him, God is able to open doors that no man can open. God is able to close doors that no man can close. God is able to do everything but fail. Amen. Storms come, but storms don't last always. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise this morning, saints. Amen. Storms come, but storms don't last always. Storms come, saints, but storms don't last always. And you need to be encouraged this morning. Whatever storm you're going through, God is able and he's willing to do everything but fail. That's why the Bible tells us if we believe all things are possible unto those who believe. Are you a believer this morning, saints of God? Do you believe that when the storm comes, God will give you the power to endure through the storm? And I'm glad about it this morning. I don't have to panic. I don't have to lose my mind when the storm comes. All I say is, God, you knew this was coming. Now I'm going to follow you. Now I'm going to fellowship with you through the storm. I mean, you got to talk to God while you're going through it, saints. That's why David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I'll feel no evil. He was talking to God as he went through it. And as you talk to God as you go through it, God's going to build your faith. To know you don't have to fear, but to know that his, his name is above all names. And at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Aren't you thankful, for God, this morning for the victory? Yeah. Amen. God, give us a victory this morning that even when the storm comes, we can be survivors in the storm. Come on, stand on your feet this morning. We're done. Before we leave this place, it's never... Amen. It's never, amen, proper protocol to give the opportunity that someone that may be going through a storm may not know who Jesus is. Whether you're in the building, whether you may hear this message through YouTube, maybe you're live streaming, whatever storm you're going through, the hurricane that you're faced with right now, our God is able and what I love so much about God, what's different between the body of Christ than the world, when the world goes through a storm, saints, they panic. They lose heart. They give up. They walk away. But those who are anchored in God, when we go through a storm, we say, God, I thank you. Because I know at the end of the storm, I'm going to be greater than I was in the beginning of the storm. That's the difference between the believer and the unbeliever. Yeah, we're going to go through things. We're going to go through hardship. We're going to go through trials. We're going to go through tribulation. We're going to go through temptation. But at the end of the storm, there is a rainbow that lets us know that God still have a covenant with us. And so this morning, we want to give an opportunity that someone may hear this message. And you are not saved. You have not allowed Jesus to become Lord. You have not allowed Jesus to become Savior. You don't follow him, amen. You don't listen to his voice, amen. You don't be obedient to his word. Well, praise God that God loves us in spite of. And Paul says in the word of God, according to Romans, the 10th chapter, 9th, 10th verse, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So for with the heart one believe unto salvation and with the mouth confession is made, amen, unto salvation, excuse me, for the scripture says, whosoever believe on him will not be put to shame. One thing I thank God for about salvation, because when storms come, salvation helps me to overlook the storm. That's what salvation does for us, because it lets us understand that we can see farther what the storm is going to do. 
And I'm here to tell you, saints, amen, I know hard times are upon all of us. In all of our lives, all of us got hard times. But may I suggest you this morning, storms come, but they don't last always. If you keep your hands on the plier, you keep believing and trusting God, he will give you the strength to make it through the storm. He'll give you the strength to make it through the storm. And I know you think you're going to give up. And I know you think the storm is going to overtake you. But Jesus says, lo, I'll be with you even to the ends of the earth. You got to believe that, saints. You got you to believe that. You got to believe that the God whom we serve, he knows everything that we're going to go through. But he knows the outcome as we go through it. He knows the outcome. And if you just hold on, you just keep the faith. God has promised, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. God has promised that to us. And all I want to do is just encourage you to hold on. Don't give up. I don't believe that God has brought me here to carries for me to preach to you that it's all done. You might as well just throw in a towel and, and walk away. No, the devil is a liar up in here. It is not over. It's not finished yet. And every time I stand in this podium, I'm going to preach that God is able to do everything but fail. Yes. Yes. And when you believe that, he'll let you see that. Father, we are thankful again this morning. Lord, you have encouraged our heart once more again. Lord, we know the hurricane season is before us. And we know in the forecast, God, there are many hurricanes in the Atlantic Ocean. Lord, but I thank you and I praise you, Lord God, that in your word you have showed us that there are hurricanes and storms that will come. You even told Peter, Lord God, that Satan had a desire to sift him as wheat. But you prayed for him that his faith would not fail him. And when he's converted to strengthen his brothers, God, you knew without a shadow of a doubt that Judah, Judas, Lord God, a hurricane was soon to come upon him. And even though he failed the test, Lord God, you gave us a talking paper, Lord God, that we know that when hurricane season comes, that, God, we're not to waver, we're not to be double-minded, Lord God. We are to cast down every high thought and every evil imagination. God, your word said, though we walk in the flesh, we don't war against the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not corner, but they're mighty through God of the pulling out of strongholds. Every high thought, every evil imagination, we are to bring it into captivity. So, Lord, I pray this morning that you would transform our mind. You would transform our thoughts, Lord God. That, God, when storms come in our lives, that, God, we will go to the word. Where well, your word says, come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace in a time of need. Lord, your word says when we go through a storm, the, you said the Lord God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever shall believe upon him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God, your word says that though, Lord God, when sickness comes against our body, that you was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisers upon you for our peace and with your stripes we are healed. God, your word says, God, when we have a need that you said in your word, you will supply all of our needs. And so, Lord, thank you for your word. For your word is our forecast that lets us see, God, that the storm will come. But, God, you have a way to rescue us through the storm. I thank you, God, for this body of believers here at Carrie's Baptist Church, God. I thank you for those who, Lord God, stand in obedience, Lord God, and are standing in obedience with your word. And I pray in Jesus' name, Lord God, that, God, you will continue on giving them long life and good health. Keep them in their right mind, Lord God, as they continue on serving you, Lord God. Give them strength in their bodies. 
But most of all, God, give them support all around them to let them know that their living is not in vain. I thank you and I praise you for this assignment, Lord God, that you have given us here at Carries. That, God, that you would always give me a prophetic word that would speak hope into your people that these, these bones, they shall live. They shall declare the works of the Lord. They shall do all that you have ordained them to do in the name of Jesus. And, Father, I thank you and I praise you that you've told us in your word in the last days you're going to pour your spirit out of our, on all flesh. You said old men and old women shall dream dreams and young men and women shall prophesy. God, we pray, God, for the generation behind us, Lord God, that they would catch hold to the word of God and they would be about your business in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we trust you for that right now in the name of Jesus, that one plants, one waters, but God, it's you who gives the increase. We give your name the glory and the honor, God, for you are God, and beside you there is none other. We take this opportunity, Lord God, to say thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. thank you for all you're doing in our lives. Thank you, God, for giving us a sound mind. Thank you, God, for giving us a peaceful mind. And even in the midst of hardship, even in the midst, Lord God, of temptation, even in the midst of, Lord God, where quitting is right up around the corner, your word tells us that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And Father, we just bless you and we honor you and we praise you for that. We just love you. We magnify your name. We thank you for all that you're doing, God. And we will forever give your name the glory, the honor, the praises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, clap those hands. Come on, clap those hands like you mean it. Thank God for the storm, but the storm don't last always. Come on, clap those hands just for a moment. He inhabit the praise of his people. Come on, clap those hands just for a moment. Thank God for the storm coming, but the storm don't last always. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, choir. Bless us, amen, as we get prepared, we get ready to leave. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, O creatures, Now may the grace of our Lord and the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit. Lord, let it rest. God, let it rule and abide within our hearts. Father God, thank you for going before us, tearing down what needs to be torn down. Thank you for building up what needs to be built up. And Father, we will forever give your name the glory and the honor and the praises for you have given us a name that's above all names. The name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, saints. Amen, amen.